Hey everybody and welcome back to Twin Chip Studio and once again we're talking about the RetroPie emulation station using Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be showing you how to transfer your ROMs over using a simple USB drive. So sit back, relax, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, get those knickers out of a twist and let's just dive into it shall we. So the first thing you're obviously going to need is a USB stick and it needs to be formatted to FAT32 or NTFS. Once you've got it all set up ready, create a new folder called RetroPi, lowercase, enter, so there it is, there is my folder, eject, eject your USB, and then plug it in to your RetroPi, and then plug it into your Raspberry Pi. Once you plug it in, your Raspberry Pi will start to blink. Once it has finished blinking, you are then able to just pull it back out again then take it back to your computer and plug it back into your computer so once you've plugged in your usb if you open that retro pie folder that you made before that had nothing in it abracadabra alakazoo shazam there is some new folders in there created by the raspberry pi you have a bios folder a configs folder and a roms folder which are for you guessed it bios configs and roms put your bios in this one that you want to transfer over if you have any config files, which is something I might get into into the future, it's very interesting. And the ROMs file, which is where all your games should go. So I've already prepared an N64 game to go in. We're going to use WWF No Mercy. I'm going to paste that in there. And that is ready to go in my ROMs file. So just like with the backslash backslash RetroPy over the network, all of the available emulators are there and you just choose the one if you want to put playstation you put it in psx if you want mega drive you put it in mega drive and etc 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 so once that is done you're going to eject the usb stick pull it out again and we're going back to the retro pie you want to plug your usb stick back into the retro pie and watch it blink the led next to the power supply will blink Wait for it to finish blinking. Jesus, that is hot. It's running quite hot. Which is probably why it's best to get a case and a fan because that is absolutely boiling right now. So wait for it to finish blinking. Once it has finished blinking, you're going to want to press start on the controller. Go all the way down to where it says quit. Press B on your Xbox controller and then press restart emulation station. Restart the emulation station. Really? Restart? I love that it always does that little question mark like that. Do you really want to restart? It's like, it's just saying, do you really want to restart? It's like, really? Restart? Yes, really. Really, really. Emulation Station will restart very quickly. And let's go over to where it says N64 and WWF No Mercy has been added to my collection. And I can quickly play it. It's very important that you wait for that LED to stop. Otherwise, you may end up with a corrupt game so just give it a couple of seconds after it finishes blinking just to make sure that it doesn't blink one more time again and that's it for this video if you like video, please hit that like button if you're new here please consider subscribing to the channel i'm going to be doing plenty of videos on retro pie emulation i'm going to show you how to get n64 games looking i'm going to show you how to get the playstation 1 games looking fantastic because right now it doesn't look they don't look very good they don't play as well as they could. I mean, they play well in the default settings, but there are plenty of other things you can do. Very simple tricks that will make the games run a lot better. For all that being said, like, comment, subscribe, etc., etc., and don't do anything I want to do. I'm going to smash in some No Mercy.